I get many questions about inverse kinematics for robotics. An inverse kinematic model gives us the ability to request to position the foot or end effector of a robot limb at a specific point in a known coordinate system and calculate all the joint positions in order to place it there. I've used inverse kinematic models in multiple robot dog projects which allows the feet to be coordinated so that the robot's body can move in three axes of translation and three axes of rotation. This allows us to move the robot's foot from point A to point B in a straight line by visiting all the waypoints between the two positions one after the other and calculating the inverse kinematics at each position. So for this video I thought I'd make a simple robot arm project with a very simple inverse kinematic model, and also make this part of the great ball contraption. This is an ongoing project built in multiple parts, which passes ping pong balls along from one stage to another by using machines which demonstrate science and engineering concepts. These will eventually all be linked together. So let's get the core parts of the design printed and I'll explain the concept. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. The main base for the robot is a very simple sliding axis, so I've got some V-wheels and I've attached those with the right spacing to a 3D print with some M5 bolts and lock nuts. These V-wheels came fitted with bearings and also spacers so you can do the bolts up nice and tight and they still rotate freely, and that allows the carriage to run on a piece of V-slot extrusion that's going to make up the main base for the robot. I've built a frame which goes at each end of the V-slot to make up four legs so we've got a nice sturdy base for the robot, and I'm using drop-in T-nuts here so that we can attach all the pieces together as I have with many other projects. So that makes one linear sliding axis which we can mount the robot arm on. I'm using fairly basic servos for this project which work with a servo PWM signal so they're easy to control, but these particular servos come with metal brackets so that we can mount them easily together to make up a limb with multiple joints. They come with small screws and brackets so we can just screw those down to the 3D print and screw the servos on. Each one has an arm which has another 3D print attached to it to make the next section of the robot arm, and again they come with self-tapping screws which easily screw in, and that makes it really easy to connect the servos together. On top of the first servo is mounted another servo, so I have two mechanical stages to my robot arm as well as the linear axis that everything sits on. This gives me a shoulder and an elbow, so we should be able to achieve quite a wide range of positions. But of course we need a gripper to actually grip the ping pong balls to pick them up and move them through the machine. So I fitted another servo on the very end which is going to control the end effector, and that one's fitted at right angles. I 3D printed some fingers for my gripper which are two parallel plates, and those are spaced apart and screwed together with countersunk self-tapping screws. I've used M4 bolts and lock nuts again to make sure we can tighten those up but not over tighten them so the fingers move really freely. And the idea is that servo has two pulleys on which is simply just going to pull strings to open the jaw and they'll be sprung back together. The kinematic model for this robot is going to be really simple so we don't need anything more than an 8-bit Arduino Uno to control all of it. The servos I'm using need a minimum of 6 volts, so I'm using a 7.4 volt 2 cell LiPo battery, which has got more than enough current capability to power all of the servos as well as the DC motor on the sliding axis. And to power the motor for the linear axis I'm using an L298, which is a fairly archaic motor driver, but it does 2 amps an axis, so that should be more than sufficient. The motor itself is driven with an encoder hung on the back, and I've 3D printed a T5 pulley for it. So this is just going to be a simple belt drive that goes all the way up and down the axis to move the carriage, a bit like a 3D printer bed or tool head. I've used an elastic band to pull the gripper fingers together so that it can grip the ping pong ball, and I've also added the strings that go around those pulleys on the gripper activation servo, so you can see the whole thing in operation. Obviously with the elastic band there we can't crush the ping pong ball, and that makes the gripper pretty much compliant. 
Now the arm's assembled, it's time to write some code for the inverse kinematic model, and that'll allow us to position the end effector, where it picks up the ball, in a known coordinate system and work out the joint positions for the other two or three joints. My approach to this is to write some code that allows us to enter the resulting length of the arm and output the two joint positions at the shoulder and at the elbow. And you'll have noticed I've made this a triangle with two equal length sides for both the upper arm and the lower arm, and that makes the maths quite a lot easier. That's a pretty easy type of triangle to solve, but looking at the website mathsisfun.com we can find out how to solve various triangles. In this case we know three sides and we want to find the missing angles. This uses Pythagoras theorem which is a simple piece of maths. I converted that maths into Arduino code which gives us the answers in radians which then need to be turned into degrees and into the milliseconds for the PWM that drives the servo. Of course once we've got one angle of the arm we can easily work out the others, and since two sides of the triangle are equal, two angles are also equal. I took some potentiometers off a previous project from the junk pile, I'm only going to use two of them, but this allows me to have an analogue input that allows me to sweep through a range of values and see if the maths works. I'm only using one axis to start with, but we should see that the arm moves in a straight line as I turn the pot and that straight line should be a 45 degree angle with its origin at the base joint of the base servo. The reason that it's at 45 degrees is because that was the default position for the servos, basically the shoulder axis pointing straight up and the elbow axis at 90 degrees. I put that offset in the code and now everything is based off that offset and that 45 degree angle. Now we've taken care of the length of the arm and that's all dealt with with the first bit of code, we now want to be able to enter two other axes to position the arm in at least 2D space. That can be done with simple trigonometry though, and the rest of the arm is already dealt with by the previous piece of code. The trigonometry looks like this. Cos of theta, the angle at the base, equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and so the hypotenuse simply equals the adjacent over cos theta. That's just one line of code so that we can work out the arm length from the two other coordinates. We do need one more piece of simple trigonometry though, so that we can modify the shoulder angle based on its new angle. I converted that to degrees and taken away the existing 45 degree offset, and I've also converted that to servo PWM, which is roughly 11 milliseconds per degree. But before we look at that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay provide both PCB manufacture and PCB assembly under the same roof, so you can get them to solder the components onto your PCB as well as make the board. And they'll do surface mount and through hole assembly. PCBWay have also launched new CNC services including online CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing and injection moulding. PCBWay CNC machining services include a wide range of materials including aluminium, stainless steel and various plastics. If you don't see the material you like, you can also choose from custom materials. Check out the PCBWay website to browse through a variety of finishes and get a quote. PCBWay manufacture all sorts of boards including standard fibreglass PCBs, but also aluminium PCBs, flexible PCBs and rigid flex PCBs, which are part rigid and part flexible. Prices start at $5 for 10 standard PCBs and $30 for 10 PCBs with assembly, but new customers can get $5 credit so you can get 10 PCBs for free the first time you order. Find out more now at PCBWay.com and I'll put that link in the description to this video. So now I'm using two potentiometers to control the arm, one of them moves the arm up and down in a pretty much perfectly straight line. There will be some issues with servo calibration here because the pots are probably low tolerance inside the servo itself that gives it feedback, so it may not run perfectly linearly. But that looks pretty good for cheap hobby servos, and some code I wrote on an 8-bit Arduino. The other pot causes the arm's reach to move in another almost perfectly straight line given the servo's tolerances, and we can see that both joints are working together there to move that arm pretty much in a perfectly straight line horizontally and vertically. 
All the code, as well as the CAD for this project, will be published, and you can find that on GitHub, and the link is in the description to this video. It's open source, so feel free to modify it and do what you like with it, or use it for inspiration in your own projects. The last axis in this project is very simple because it moves in a straight line anyway, so we don't really need to do any maths to control it, but check out my previous robot dog projects if you want to see something more complicated. I've programmed the robot arm to move through some set motions using the kinematic model so it moves in X and Z positions in order, and there's three positions in this sequence. However, you'll notice that it's very jerky because the servos move at full speed, and also for some moves, one servo doesn't need to move as far, so it gets there first. That means we don't have a very smooth motion. So I'm going to be using the Arduino ramp library from SiteSwap Juggler, which is open source and you can find it on GitHub. It has various parameters, but ultimately allows us to interpolate through positions from one point to another and make our motion really smooth. The example code that ships with the ramp library is pretty simple. All we need to do is my ramp go, give it a value to interpolate to, and a time we want to interpolate over. So if we now open the serial plotter, we can see we get a linear rise here, straight from one value to the other without a step. There are various other responses in this library as well, but for now we're just going to use the linear one. So now I'm feeding both the Z and the X positions over the ramp library, and I'm feeding them over the same amount of time. So now my step sequence is allowing those joints to move over the same amount of time, and the end effector of the robot should be moving in a perfectly straight line between them. So this is a much smoother motion, and also we can control how fast it moves by interpolating each move over a longer or shorter time if we wish to do so. But now we need to pick up some balls and pass them along so the arm can be part of the great ball contraption. I'm using one of these sensors that I've used in the past so we can sense when balls are present and trigger a series of motions. I made a short ramp to feed the arm which has the sensor on. Eventually this will be fed by a reservoir and a longer ramp and that means we can throttle the amount of balls passed through this stage and the rest of the great ball contraption. When it sees a ball present, it picks it up, takes it to the other end and drops it, which will take it onto the next stage, perhaps into the high voltage ball accelerator that I made last time. If I stack multiple balls in the ramp, I've put various safeguards in the code that means it finishes one cycle before being triggered again. So this means it will keep coming round, picking up the balls, taking them to the other end and dropping them, until the ramp is empty, in which case it stops. I'm pretty happy with this from a functional point of view to demonstrate inverse kinematics. What would be great from an educational and visual point of view would be to have perhaps two LED strips, one vertical and one horizontal, that show the inputs to the axis as the robot arm moves. So we can show that what goes in is lines in a straight line, and what comes out is the rotation of these joints. But for now, this is a great addition to my great ball contraption. Look at the other parts in my channel. I'm going to be building a few more and then stringing them all together so that balls get passed all the way around and hopefully back to the beginning again. If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more pieces of this. 
more robotics and more open source designs. And you can find all my designs, which are open source, on GitHub. The link's in the description to this video. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be involved in all of that discussion. All right, that's all for now.